What's up, guys? Toogie here, back again with some more NHL 16 and my New York Islanders GM Mode series. And quickly, before we get into the Season 3 sim, I have a couple of things I need to uh, update you guys on. First off, we made a trade with the New York Rangers to clear up just a little bit of space. We had Sergei Mogilny and Doug Blaisdell. Now, I don't think Mogilny, he's AHL potential. I don't think he'll be a big loss. Blaisdell is AHL top two. He might end up being a decent defender. I believe he's 72 or 74 overall, as it is at 20 years old. But we needed to clear up the roster spots. We get the Rangers' fourth and fifth round picks this year and next. So a little bit of a decent return. And that brings me to what the lineups are going to be at the start of the next season. Everything is the same with the exception that I put Casey Sezikis on the third line. I'm really, oh shit. Okay, I swear to God. Oh, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> I swear to God. Okay, here, let me explain. I put Sezikis on the third pairing because I'm worried about Barzal. Now, he was an 82, and magically, he's up to an 83. I literally just checked a minute ago before I started recording. He was an 82, so I don't know what just happened there. But I'm afraid with him being depth, deep, uh, depth forward, I should say, not defenseman, that he might not progress properly. You know, that was brought up in the comment section not too long ago and how it might be better to have him down in the AHL. So I was going to start Sezikis on the third pairing, see how Barzell did on the fourth, and if he struggled, send him down, since we still can, and just get another center for the fourth line, or really another winger, since we could have Zach Smith on the fourth line. I'm very nervous about Barzal's development, but he is an 83. We'll start him off on the third line. If he struggles, fourth line, and we'll monitor him very closely from there. And if he still struggles on the fourth line... We'll send him down to Bridgeport and acquire a fourth-line player. Defensively, everything is the same. The AHL is where the big changes are, and we signed ourselves some players. Now, I was going to go with the prospects, guys like Strom, guys like Hishier, and we could have signed Hishier, but with like Strom and Cal Foot, they would have been sent back down to junior. They were underage. They would have had to go back down to junior, so it would have been a waste. We will wait until next year. So here are the lines we are going to go with in Bridgeport, and I'm excited to see what this team can do. It's a good mix of veterans and young prospects. We have Tyler Soy with Alan Quine and Joshua Hosang, looking for a very big year out of Hosang. He could break into the lineup next year. So could Quine. I mean, at best, he's a fourth-line guy. If he could get up to around an 80 or even an 81, ideally, and we have to send Barzal down, that's an easy swap for the two of them. Second line, Jeremiah Addison, who we acquired in the last episode, is with Anthony Beauvillier and one of our new free agent signings, Landon Ferraro. Excited to see what he can do. Third line is Carl Grundstrom with Johan Sundstrom and Matt Bradley. And then the fourth line happens to uh, consist of our three other free agent signings. It is Brian Gibbons, Danny Paye, and Spencer Abbott. So a little bit of a mixture there. Some offense, some defense, and a little bit of grit when it comes to Ferraro. And Pie, well, not so much for Pie anymore. Defensively, we also made two signings. Our top pairing, though, is going to be Parker Watherspoon and Matt Finn. Mitch Vandesampel, who I could put with uh, with uh, uh, Watherspoon instead of Finn because of his potential, but we're going to put him with Mark Alt, one of our two new uh, defensive signings. I am just uh and ah uh, and stuttering quite a bit, aren't I? Trying to get all this information out and not forget anything. Brian Strait, former Islander, back with the team. He plays with Clinton Rafalski who is the weak link on defense, but we had to have at least one of them because I wanted to leave a spot open. We have one uh, contract spot left, and I want to keep a close eye on waiver claims this year. So we could have a little bit of a better defense, but I do want that spot open for potential waiver claims. And, of course, Soderstrom and Adam Werner are the tandem to start the year. So that is the team. And whether or not we compete for a third straight Stanley Cup remains to be seen. I don't know if I would have any confidence in that. But I do think that we have a very, very well-crafted team, especially with guys like Winnick as depth players, Bortuzzo and Butler defensively. We do have a very well-rounded team. And we will sim the first two games of the season live. Uh, ben Bishop makes his debut We'll go with Grice against the Western Conference team in L.A. Bishop's debut against Pittsburgh is a 1-0 shutout, and then he gets a 2-1 win over the Nashville Predators. What a great start there for Big Ben. 2-0, and 
94, 92, 90 are our ratings, by the way. I didn't point those out. I normally tend to. But yeah, not too bad. How is Barzal done? So far, only one assist. <laughs> Probably way too early to be uh, to be checking on that. But again, I am very hesitant, very nervous to see what he can do. Two games, a 982 save percentage. Give him the Vezin. Now, speaking of Vezinas, though, Thomas Grice in goal for this game against the LA Kings. What can he do here as we sim this opening month? That's a 2-1 win, but Travis Hammack goes down to injury. But you see, the best thing about that is, is we have a certain someone who can pretty much just fill into the lineup. He was a right-handed shot, so I believe it's Chris Butler is our right-handed alternate, as I meant to go best lines, and we'll have to... I did not mean to scratch that call. What is going on? This is a clusterfuck. It's weird, though. Best lines tells me to put Barzal on the second line, so that's probably a good sign for him. We have to get everything set up. It puts Daniel Winnick in. Instead of P.A. Parento, this is taking a lot longer than I thought. I will say, though, I am going to sim the first month live, and then we'll go into our normal uh, extended sim period. Oh, no, never mind. To uh, Bortuzzo is the righty. So it's Letty Boy, Chuck DeHaan, Pulock, and Pellick with Robert Bortuzzo. And now, of course, Ben Bishop is back in goal. But we are 3-0 and to start this year. We will sim the next two games with Bishop between the pipes, and we lose one nothing to the Leafs. And Hamannick is back already. So that mad scramble to get people into the lineup was um, pretty much a waste of time. And that's why I tend to sim quite a bit ahead because the roster management, the line management, takes so goddamn long. Especially when you have some seasons like we've had where it's just injury after injury after injury, but let's take a look here. Hamannick needs to be with Dahan, Pelik, and Pulak, and that is set up. We got a game here against the Anaheim Ducks. Bishop between the pipes, and that is a 4 1 loss, so we're crashing back down to reality here just a bit. Pittsburgh and Philly, both 4 and 2 to start the year, so no crazy 11 0 starts for the New York Rangers. Bishop at a 950 save percentage, though, so it's absolutely not him. So far, the offense has just been failing us here. And maybe at the end of the month, we'll take a look and see how people have done. We get the shootout win in Calgary, and that puts us back up into third place very early on in this season. But yeah, I think that's what we'll do. We will um, we'll send the end of the or send to the end of the month. You know, we'll do this live here. We'll check the stats. We'll go to probably the All Star break, depending. I'm not really sure here. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll call it quits there if we need any changes to be made. The scouting, I know people normally don't, I know people normally say like, oh, scout the, the WHL last, but I'm honestly not too concerned. Like I said, half the time I sim anyway, people don't show up. Uh, we will pass on Taylor Chorney, but it's good to see that we're getting waiver offers already. Like I said, my problem, as we go 3-0 and in that stretch, we have now won four straight games, a 7-2 and record. My problem with the game is even when I scout areas, there are still people that pop up all the time as, you know, not being scouted. So do I, you know, set up to scout in certain areas? Yes. But do I, you know, put much emphasis on it in these episodes? No, because it's pointless by the time the draft comes around. Thomas Grice is in goal for the last game of the month against the Rangers, and it's a 6-4 loss. That's a pretty rough game. For the defense, but at the end of the opening month, we stand with a 7-3 record. So not too bad. We have a very, very busy month of November ahead of us. But we are currently in second place, just behind the Columbus Blue Jackets. And we'll take a quick look at the stats here. Very quick, because I will probably end up doing this towards the end of the episode. Ben Bishop's doing okay. Grice needs to be a little bit better. Michael Dalcall, 10 points so far. Very good. 10 points for Tavares. Very good. 9 points for Goodrow. More of a playmaker so far this season. He needs to start getting the goals. Although, you know, he's definitely a playmaking type of guy, but I, I have him as a sniper to really have him utilize that five-star shot. Andrew Ladd, only three points. Oof, Anders Lee, only one point, And Ryan Strom with two. So that second line is really sucking balls right now. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, third line, in a shame, Prince of four points, six points for Barzal, and only two for Nelson. 
fourth line, a point for Zach Smith, two for Sezikis, and three for P.A. Parento. So, with that information, what I think we're going to do, Barzal on the same, as best lines tend to do. Again, he's having a pretty good season so far. I'm going to put Nelson down with Ezekis and Smith and have Prince with Anders Lee and P.A. Parento. Defensively, let's see, Letty and Boychuk struggling a little bit, more more Letty than anything. Dahan and Hamannick doing well. And really, I mean, Pulak and Pelik, no points so far, but they're both plus players, so that is a positive. So we just have that one uh, or eh, a couple major changes. But on the second line, we will see how it goes with Ryan Strom. We really need Lad to step up there, and I'm almost tempted to put Lad on the second line or on the top line and then have Goodrow on that second pairing to play. You know what? I know Joe's doing well, but I think I'm going to do that. We'll have Andrew Ladd up there, since these two guys are uh, getting points anyway. And we'll have Goodrow with Barzell and Strom to see if he can help unlock their offensive capabilities. I'm not saying I'm going to stick with that for the entire season, but we'll see how it goes. Again, at this point, I am going to sim to the All-Star break on January 22nd, unless anything major happens, major injuries or anything like that. Otherwise, we will see how this new look team does. Will these line changes help or hurt us? If they hurt us, obviously I won't hesitate to switch them back. But let's see how this team does over the next few months. 25, 13, and 6. The New York Islanders currently in a pretty decent spot as we hit the All-Star break. Of course, the starting month of October went fairly well for us. November went really well for us. Two overtime losses. Washington and Montreal and the Caps have had our number all year or all season so far we lost to the Caps and that was it so only one loss in regulation throughout the month of November but in December the losses to add up as you can see to uh just uh just a little bit nosedive I mean not completely and then this month again has been hit or miss but as we hit the all-star break like I said we are in spot we are in second place in our division just behind the Caps, who, like I said, have just kicked our ass all season long. We are five points back, but we have two games at hand, so that's uh, that's looking pretty good for us. We are in a pretty tough division right now as well. The Devils, Rangers can easily, easily compete for that second wild card spot that currently belongs to the Atlantic. But we currently have the seventh best record in the NHL right now. The Bruins are uh, kicking ass, which... Isn't the worst sight in the world, but overall, I do want to give you guys a quick look at the roster. We are going to stop the episode here. I want to get you a look at the stats and give you an opportunity to have your, uh, you know, to voice your opinion and what you think we should do as we move forward here. Top line, we have rolled or we have gone with Dow Call, who's having a good season. Tavares is having a really good season, and Andrew Ladd is up there right now, not doing too bad. Twenty-six points. We could definitely have Johnny Goodrow there, who's having a great season on that second line. But I think that's the first line's probably a better spot for Ladd. What do you guys think? Should we go with Goodrow or should we go with Ladd? Ladd will obviously perform better with Dow Call and Tavares, or do we want that top line of Dow Call, Tavares, and Goodrow to just rip everybody apart? Matthew Barzal right now, 29 points, is not doing too bad. He's still only an 83 overall, which is concerning. I'd like him to hit an 84 just so I know that he's progressing. But he's having a good year. As has Ryan Strom. Again, not too bad of a season thus far. The uh, bottom six, though, has been a bit concerning. Anders Lee, only 15 points, of course, started off on the second line. Casey Sezikis right now on the third line with 17 points. And Shane Prince, who has the same total. The fourth line, Brock Nelson, only nine points. Smith with eight. And Daniel Winnick right now, who hasn't played a game. We actually just had P.A. Parento get injured in the last game. So he is in by default. Parento, though, having you know a decent season for a guy who's been on the fourth line for pretty much all of it with 13 points. So let me know what you think. The big question really is Barzal. What do we do? Uh, Goodrow and Ladd, you know, should we swap those two guys? And, you know, should we maybe shake up the bottom six? I'm not sure how. Honestly, if we send down Barzal, I might look at uh, acquiring Yurko, who I think is still on Detroit and has been offered to us. He hasn't been offered to us in a while, though. Defensively, it is Nick Letty having a decent season with Johnny Boychuk having a pretty good season. Uh, Calvin DeHaan, three assists, but an equal plus minus, so not too bad. Travis Hamannick right now having a pretty damn good season, up to an 87 overall. Adam Pellick, one goal. That's it for points. I mean, I don't expect him to get points. You look 
He has three star puck skills, four star shooting. He's a good skater. He's physical, and just, you know the defensive stats aren't the greatest, but it is still four and a half star. I don't think he'll reach his actual potential. I'm just hoping he can cap off around I don't know like an 83, 84, and be a legit top six guy. Ryan Pulock as well, no progression, five goals thus far on the season. So I'm all right with that defense. You know, I want to keep Adam Pellick there and see if he can really progress. It's the last year of his contract. I'm not sure what he's going to be able to do. Obviously, we could have a little bit better of a defense if we wanted to. The goaltending. Ben Bishop started off really well around a 950, and then a 940, a 930, now hovering at a 925 after 33 games played. Thomas Grice, that save percentage has fluctuated a lot. He is currently at a 906 with 14 games played. So our goaltending has been okay. It hasn't been great. It hasn't been as good as it could possibly be, but I am happy with the tandem that we have. Down in the AHL, we'll take a quick look. Tyler Soy right now having a pretty good season thus far. Alan Quine doing well, and Hosang is up to an 81 overall, so that's good. Bavillier is a 77. He is having a pretty decent season. So is Jeremiah Addison, the new addition. Bradley is up two overall points. He's having a decent season so far with 20 points. Grundstrom struggling. And then, of course, we have the fourth line. Guys, defensively, Parker Watherspoon missed a little bit of time, but he is up to a 78 overall. Matt Finn having a good season now at an 81 overall. Van de Sample, a 76. He's doing all right. Mark Alt, we don't really care about. Nor Brian Strait. Clinton Rafalski still at a 70. Has four points on the year. The goaltending line is Soderstrom up to an 80 overall with a 917 save percentage. Adam Warner hasn't played much, but he is up to a 75 overall. So there you have it, guys. That is the team. And what do you think? What should we do, if anything? Should we, you know, just keep it as simple as altering the lines a little bit? Or should we do something a little bit bigger? Who knows? Let me know what you think on how we should approach the rest of this season. And keep in mind, how many draft picks do we have at the moment? We have two first-round picks this year. We have our own and Detroit, which is shaping up to be pretty good. Detroit does not have Yurko listed. That's the last thing I wanted to check to see if Thomas Yurko was still there, and I don't think he's going to be. So that ship may have sailed, but obviously there are other players that we could go out and get. And indeed, they traded Yurko. I'm not sure to where. We'll try to find that really quick. But as always, guys, as we wrap up this episode, I do thank you all for watching as I go to the wrong menu screen. But if you have enjoyed this episode, make sure to leave a like to help out the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. This game doesn't want to tell you where Yurko went, so I'm sorry for that anticlimactic ending. But again, I do thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.